Hi guys, I'm Darren and in this video we're going to have a quick look at a problem some people are having with SXR receivers. So when I talk about SXR receivers, I mean FreeSky's stabilized receivers. And quite a few people have sent me a message saying that they're having problems enabling the stabilized mode and basically the, the Lua script isn't working as it should. And this is especially true with the new Archer Plus SR10 Plus receiver. Now, the reason for this is there is actually a new Lua script to control these receivers. So what we're gonna do is have a look at how to download and install that on the transmitter. But first things first, let's just do a basic health check and make sure that we're all up to date. So what we're gonna do first is plug this into our USB. So power on the transmitter, I'll turn the volume off. Skip any screens that you need to skip. And what we're gonna do is just plug in the USB, which I'm doing unsighted. <laughs> there we go. And on this screen, we're gonna choose EFOS Suite. If you've got an older version of EFOS, this may say Free Sky Suite. So just click that. When that symbol's on the screen, we're all good to go. And on your computer, you'll probably get a few drives opening up. We can just close those for now. And what we're gonna do is pop into EFOS Suite, which you can download from the Free Sky GitHub. Now this screen will pop up. If there's a new version of EFOS Suite, it will also pop up a little message. This looks like the latest version, so we can continue. If you wanted to take a backup, you can go to Model Manager. And this is the folder where your backups are located. You can choose that with this button here. And we're gonna click Backup. And you can choose what you want to back up. So I'm not gonna bother with audio because that takes ages. I'm not gonna bother with that. So I'm just gonna back up the models, bit, user bitmaps, scripts, and logs. And I'm gonna put a remark that it is for the X20S. So let's click the backup button. And this will do our backup for us. Then if we do have a problem, we can restore this and everything's good. Right, so now the backup has completed. We've got our zip file, so we can just OK that. Next, what we're going to do is go into EFOS. And it's just going to check the versions. Now, I'm pretty sure this is going to be out of date. So we're going to update to the latest stable release. And I'm going to just update the outdated components. So we'll click that and we'll let it do its thing. So once this is updated, I'll come back. Okay, so our firmware has been updated successfully. Now, this is just the operating system firmware. There's another couple of firmwares that we might wanna check while we're doing this too. One is the radio firmware, so the, the, the firmware of the RF module in here, but also the firmware for our receivers. So to do this, we're gonna to go to the FreeSky website. And the first thing we'll do is let's check our radio. So if we go to transmitter, tandem series. Now this is the X20S. And we click on download, which will then take us to the downloads page. And we can see our RFTD firmware here. Now, the latest version is 2.2.4, so let's check on the radio and see what we've got. So to do this, I'm gonna to have to unplug the USB and we're gonna go into our system and info. And what we're looking for is here, internal module, you can see I'm on 2.2.4, which is the latest version. I don't have a receiver connected yet, so it's not coming up on there. But what do you do if you're not on the latest version? Well, to show you this, I'm just gonna plug the USB back in and we'll go back to EFOS Suite. So this time it's opened up the folders. I'm gonna leave them open. So this is the flash drive, I can close this one and we'll keep this one open, which is the SD card. If you're using an X18 or another transmitter that has NAND storage and you store your firmware on the NAND storage, you wanna keep that one open. Um, I'm going to go through this quickly. I do have other videos on how to do this, so I'll put a link up where it's a bit fuller. Um, basically, I've created firmware uh, folders. So I have the ISRM module here, and you can see I already have the ISRM 2.2.4 firmware 
If you don't have that on your transmitter, which if you need to update, you probably haven't, just click this download button, download the file, and then copy the FRSK file onto your transmitter. So the other one that we want to check is the receiver. So let's go to 2.4 access. And the one that people have this problem with a lot is the S Archer Plus SR10, which I can't actually see on here. Oh, there it is, Archer Plus SR10 Plus. So I'm going to open that in a new tab because the receiver I've actually got on the table is this one right here, the SR10 Pro. And again, we're just going to go to the download page and we're going to look in firmware. So the latest version is 1.2.12. I'm going to just do the download because I don't know if I've got it or not. So we'll stick that on the desktop. And this bit of the process is exactly the same as it would have been for a transmitter. So that's downloaded. My receiver firmware is in a different place than Archer, all except RS, it should be here. So this is the zip file that downloaded. So I'm just gonna open that up and you can see we have Archer 2.1.12, which I've already got on here, but all you need to do is just copy that onto your SD card. So we have that firmware, but let's check the SR10 Pro. So firmware, we have, this is a different firmware. So we have 1.0.5, let's download that. And again, I've got that in an Archer Plus folder. So I'm actually not up to date with that. So that does need updating. So let's just copy that FRSK file onto the SD card. So we've actually done one. But what we'll do now is head back and I'll show you how to update the internal module firmware. Right, so we can unplug for the USB cable. Make sure that you've got plenty of battery. If you don't, what you can do is plug the USB cable back in, which will start charging your radio. On this screen, just press the return button. Now everything is just gonna function as normal. So we're not actually doing anything with the USB cable, but it is charging. So what we wanna to do to update the internal module, we're gonna go into File Manager. Now, this is where you'll need a bit of discretion depending on how your system's set up. I've copied this to the SD card. If you put it on your NAND storage, if you have that, you'll select that in the top. So I'm gonna to go to my firmware folder, transmitters, X18 and X20, and I'm gonna choose the 2.2.4 FRSK and you just choose flash internal module that's all there is to it so this will go through now and flash and what it does I'll find a battery for this right so success the internal module has now been updated so if you went if you're on an older version and you go back to the info screen now you will see that you have the latest version so what I'm going to do is plug this in and what I need to do is actually find a model that I can use this with. So let me check out the RF system. All right, access. Let's see if I can just bind it. Yep, there we go. So that is connected to this radio. So it was already registered. But now um, the internal modules are on. We have our RSSI up. So if I go in system and info, it will now tell me what firmware is on the receiver. So you can see here we're on 2.1.10. So let's go back to the file manager, go to our firmware, receivers, Archer, all except RS. And there's actually a 2.1.10 uh, 2 is the latest version. Actually, no, there's 2.1.12. So let's flash this. So we're going to click it. We're going to go flash RX uh, by internal over the air here. So I've done this wrong already. What you need to do is click that with this not plugged in, then plug this in and it will pop up and you choose SR10. Current version is 2.1.10. So yeah, we're updating to the latest version. So this will now go through and update the receiver.
Now, I'm not going to do this again with the Archer Plus because that is actually buried in a model somewhere at the moment. So I'll need to actually get that model down to plug in the battery to do the update. And it is quite a big model, so I won't be able to put that on the table. But once this has finished flashing, we'll go and download and install the Lua script. There we go. So it's now completed the update. So if we close this, we'll back out of the file manager. Once again, go into info and we'll scroll down. We can see that our firmware is now 2.1.12. So this is now updated. Now let's have a quick look and see if the tool messes about with this one. So let's choose SXR. You can see it's working fine on this transmitter by look of this receiver. So let's see if we can turn that back on. Yeah, so it seems to only be the Archer Plus SR10 Plus that has the issue. But anyway, let's get this Lua script on so we don't have issues with that uh, receiver. So the first thing that we need to do is unplug this and plug it back in. And we're gonna choose EFOS Suite again. So back at the computer again, we're gonna wait for our drives uh, to appear and what we want is the one with scripts on. If you've not got scripts, you'll need to check on your radio where your scripts are stored. On the X20, it will be the SD card. If it's got NAND storage, it could say that it's stored on the radio, in which case you'll want to store the scripts there. But for me, they are on the SD card, so that's where I'll be installing this stuff. Because it's the last firmware I downloaded, you can see that we're already on the Archer Plus SR10 Plus download page. If you can't remember how to get there, just go back a few minutes in this video because that is exactly the same location. It's just the downloads page for that receiver. And what we're gonna do is go to Lua Script and we're gonna click download. So again, I'm gonna put this on the desktop and let's get this out of the way. So you'll now have this new zip file called freesky stab underscore rx um, and the version number, which for this one is 2.0.4. Let's just confirm that. Yep, 2.0.4. So let's open this up and take a look. I'm just gonna drag this to the side so that we can get a nice look of both folders. And let's take a look. So there's a readme file that's gonna tell you where to install stuff, but there is just a scripts folder, so it is gonna be just a case of dragging that in. But if you wanna look at the readme file, by all means, and this is probably gonna say, check whether you're using SD card or radio storage, and that's it. So let's just copy this in. So I'm gonna go in my scripts folder, and I'm gonna copy these, and that's it. Now what we need to do is close these down and head back to the radio. So before we actually use any of this stuff, we need to disconnect our USB and we're gonna restart the radio. Now, before we would go into device config and use our SRX tool here, but we're not doing that anymore. We're going into the system menu and you can see we have SRX calibration and SRX stable. So let's take a look at these. So this is the calibration setup. So this will set up the orientation of the receiver and SRS stable is basically all the settings that are in the old SXR tool. We're on page one. If we press this middle button, we go to page two, but we can't get back to page one. So exit out to get to page one. So let's take a quick look at the settings. I don't know if it will work with this receiver, but let's take a look anyway. So let's exit out, give it the best chance. We've got our RSSI, we're connected. No, so it's probably only gonna be working with the new Archer Plus receivers um, and stuff maybe like the RB35, maybe that uses the same system. But let's take a quick look at what we have available anyway. So stabilizing on and off is gonna be the same as the SXR enable on and off and self-check and quick mode of, of the same. Wing type was on a different page before and also the, hor the mounting type whether it's horizontal or on the side or 
you can choose that from the, the list. Channel 5 and Channel 6 mode is actually renamed to be nicer. Um, this was before the AUX enable thing. So if you're using these for a second aileron or second elevator, that's how it comes out of the box. But if you wanted to use them for something like flaps, you would need to turn them off. So I'd imagine if you can get into this menu, it would say uh, auxiliary instead of aileron 2 and elevator 2. So that's nice. The reversal for the ailerons, elevator rudder and the second ailerons is all there. Then we have our gains, the auto level gains, the hover and knife edge gains. And we have two settings, aileron and elevator auto level offset. So I guess that's if it's not quite straight, you can adjust it in both sort of pitch and roll. And then we have the hover offset. So again, I'm guessing that this is if it's not staying vertical, you can adjust the elevator so it's vertical or the rudder. So that's what those settings are for. And knife edge offset. Again, you're on the side. So the aileron offset is if it's going to be rolling too much and the rudder is going to be your up and down angle. So that's page one. Let's check out page two and see what's on there. So let's press the page button. So the top settings all look exactly the same. So you can adjust those on both pages. Now we have got channel 10 mode and channel 11 mode. So this is possibly for more extended systems. I know the advanced stabilization system on the RB35 has this. So uh, aileron four and elevator four you can have, and then you've got the directions for the extra uh, control surfaces. So you, you can have, for example, a second rudder, third, fourth ailerons and elevators. So that is what's on page two and also the gains for those. So I'd imagine you wouldn't actually be using the second page on most of sort of these types of receivers, but this will be for the advanced stabilization stuff, like the RB25S and the RB35S. So that is how to install the Lua script and what you can change. Now you can see most of it is exactly the same as the old tools with just different names, but it will allow you to use it with the new Archer Plus receivers and I'd imagine anything else that comes out in the future. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and remember to click the subscribe and bell icon. That will help get this video out to more people so they can learn about this too. Thank you very much for watching guys. See you on the next one. Fly your models like you stole them.